In a world of epic B-roll, iPhone cinematic modes and luma transitions, it's very easy to get caught up that this type of trend or effect is what makes a good video. And if you just can't pull off that stuff, you're going to have to learn how to do it. I know because I've been there myself, making serial commercials, epic B-roll, and trying super trendy in-camera transitions. For the last year or so of uploading videos, I've been trying to chase the stuff which gets views, rather than focusing on learning tangible skills that will make my filmmaking better. If you don't know me, my name's Tom, I am a self-employed video creator and photographer based here in the UK. It's really important to say that I'm not bashing that type of work, but I will be honest and say there are probably more effective, more efficient ways to make your video better. So that's what I'm doing in this video. This is three tangible ways to make your videos better. And I promise that each of these three tips will improve your video projects. Number one, investing in a telephoto lens. And we're going to start off simple, and this really is a pretty basic tip. I don't want to make this video too gear heavy, but buying a telephoto lens for me was genuinely really a bit of a light bulb moment for me as a filmmaker. I think that's because of the way these lenses let you capture content that is very, very different than the eye can actually see. Take a second and think about the last time you saw the most incredible sunset out in person and you didn't have anything on you apart from your phone. You went to your phone, opened your camera app and thought you were about to get the banger of your life and instead you just snapped this. It's underwhelming, right? And that's generally because cameras on smartphones operate at roughly like a 25 millimeter focal range. That's roughly about half of the representation of what the human eye see. We see it roughly a 50 millimeter focal range. So that's why when you've taken that photo of that sunset, it looks kind of really zoomed out. And it's why for the opposite reason that buying a telephoto lens and investing in a telephoto lens can actually mean that you get some super interesting compositions that just wouldn't be possible with any other type of piece of equipment. Not to mention that shooting details is actually one of my favorite ways personally to enhance a project. And these long lenses allow you to capture details super effectively. And it also has the benefit of allowing to capture people much more naturally because you didn't have a camera shoved up in their face. I know I said I didn't want to make this gear heavy, but for me, a telephoto lens really genuinely inspired me to go and shoot. And ultimately, that should be the aim of buying new gear. You should either be buying something that is fixing a genuine issue or really inspiring you to go out and create. Number two, shoot more angles. It's very rare that when you're watching something on the TV, something in the cinema, or even more popular videos here on YouTube, YouTubers have got extremely good at capturing attention. It's really rare that you'll have a static shot going on for too long. I've been guilty of this massively in my YouTube videos where I might just set up a shot like this, and that's basically the whole majority of the video is just a static like this and nothing else changes. The truth is maybe you and I need to get less lazy with my filmmaking. I'm gonna trade back into my other top and make out like this was the same day, but no, different day through the power of filmmaking. Maybe you're looking to make this a job or turn this into a career, and uh, something you'll learn quite quickly if you do do filmmaking, maybe you go and work for yourself, is that you will have to take jobs that just aren't that exciting. And that's why for me, having this YouTube channel, having somewhere where I can express myself, try and get better and better with every single upload and really push myself creatively is really important. By shooting new angles and expanding what I actually do here in my videos, Hopefully I'll get better. I'm taking advantage of what's actually really great about video rather than just like a talking headshot and I may as well just have a podcast. I do quite a lot of run and gun filmmaking, basically just shooting as much stuff as quickly as possible. Often this is quite common in sort of agency or advertising-y type content uh, where you might be capturing an event or capturing a uh, experience. By shooting as many angles as possible, as much content as possible, you basically give yourself so many more tools to create a cohesive and good story in your final production. Number three, shoot with two cameras. Now this is going to vary depending on the type of projects that you are filming, but shooting with two cameras is basically just a ginormous hack for a few reasons. For the more advanced filmmakers, the more experienced people in the room, please forgive me when I explain why we shoot with two cameras uh, to anyone who's just sort of getting started in their filmmaking journey. One of the main reasons that we film with two cameras is so that we can take an interview shot. Say you've been shooting for 20 minutes filming one interview. It's very rare that you would have talent or a subject talk in beautiful eloquent sentences for that 20 minute period. On YouTube we're really used to jump cuts where the creators will sort of jump in and out and in and out on almost like one static shot. However in a more production environment that just isn't really possible. By having two cameras and two angles we can cut between those two angles nice and smoothly and we're able to hide any cuts that actually come along during that interview. It also has the advantage that you can restructure the interview entirely. You could put the start near the end or the end near the start. Another reason is just 
just much more dynamic, much more engaging. And when we're working with a slightly more boring uh, subject matter, maybe just a standard, almost, almost like corporate talking head, having two angles is a really good way to keep your viewer engaged. I would normally recommend having a wide or a sort of standard mid shot. So this sort of lower chest to uh, a bit of headroom and then a much more zoomed in telephoto look. This is normally the way that I shoot two camera interviews and you could even have a third angle perhaps on a slider adding a bit of dynamics to your video. And that's that. That's the tips. Hopefully three ways to actually tangibly improve your videos and I'll see you guys next week.